When the humans first arrived on Cyros Prime, the Vidians expected to crush the upstart race under their heel. But the humans had a surprise in store for the arrogant aliens. The Vidian homeworld glittered under the light of its twin moons, the night sky filled with towering crystalline spires. A human shuttle pierced the skyline, landing at the base of the tallest tower. Michael Miller, a rugged 35-year-old explorer and Earth's first ambassador, stepped onto the alien soil. An imposing eight-foot-tall creature approached, his elongated head draped in ornate red and gold robes. Large obsidian eyes sized up the comparatively diminutive human. I am Sire Father Craxtool, High Counselor of the Vidian Imperium, the Universal Translator conveyed in a buzzing voice. I must say, I expected humanity's first representative to be more... impressive. As they walked past gawking civilians to a transport, Michael caught snippets of conversation, like insectoid clicks and hums. So that's a human? Doesn't look like much. Soft, squishy creatures, surprised they made it to space. A news drone flew up and snapped a hollow. Crackstool waved it away dismissively. You must forgive them, the sire father said. We Vidians have never encountered a species with technology advanced enough to be worthy of contact. Some call us the lonely lords of the stars. I do hope your kind proves more capable than you appear. Michael bit back his irritation. The condescending alien had no idea what humanity was capable of. When the upstart humans destroyed the greatest threat the galaxy had ever known, the Vidians would grovel before Earth in submission. I think we'll surprise you, Michael said evenly. Humanity is full of surprises. As the transport accelerated toward the alien capital, Michael steeled himself. The Vidians would soon learn the error of underestimating humanity. Earth was depending on him for the species' very survival. Failure was not an option. The hover transport glided to a halt at the base of the towering Vidian Imperium Capital Dome, a colossal structure of twisted spires and shimmering biometal. As Michael stepped onto the walkway, he froze in surprise. Stretching out before him were thousands of Vidians, all craning their elongated necks to catch a glimpse of the human ambassador. Clicking mandibles and buzzing whispers rippled through the crowd as Michael passed. Waiting at the far end of the walkway was a contingent of imposing Vidians clad in form-fitting chitinous armor, moonlight glinting off their carapaces. The tallest among them, an individual with a crown of swept-back horns, stepped forward. I am General Zixkal, he announced in a grating, buzzing voice. Commander of the Vidian Defense Forces, my troops and I will be providing security for the duration of your stay, Ambassador Miller. Michael met the General's cold, appraising stare, noticing how the guard's hands hovered near the oddly organic-looking sonic disruptors at their hips. It was clear the Vidians were on edge about having a human in their midst. As he entered the Capitol Dome behind Craxtel, Michael found himself in a cavernous space with walls that pulsed with dim bioluminescence, the air thick with an acrid alien musk. The sire father led him into a vast, circular chamber where Vidians perched in tiered rows of seats. On a raised central dais sat seven ancient-looking specimens, their exoskeletons gnarled and pitted. The Vidian High Council welcomes Ambassador Michael Miller of Earth, Craxtel declared, his voice echoing in the chamber. Stealing himself, Michael approached the central councillor, a wizened creature with a crown of jagged horns whose compound eyes fixed on him with unnerving focus. I stand before the Sire Father Council, the aged Vidian rasped, the supreme authority of the Vidian Imperium. I am High Councillor Zorith. We have convened to hear your case for why we should consider your species worthy of our recognition. Michael launched into his prepared speech, extolling the benefits of trade and cultural exchange. But as he spoke, a nagging doubt crept into his mind. The Council's expressions, what he could read of them, remained utterly inscrutable. Were they even listening? When he finished, a heavy silence settled over the chamber. Then at last Zorith spoke. Your proposal is interesting, Ambassador. We will adjourn to consider it. With that, the Council rose and filed out of the chamber, leaving Michael standing alone at the centre of the vast space, 
suddenly feeling very small under the weight of all those alien eyes. Hours crawled by as Michael paced the cramped confines of his Spartan guest quarters. The room offered little comfort, with a slab of hard insectoid chitin serving as a poor excuse for a bed. A chittering sound drew his attention to the far wall, where a crude nutrient paste dispenser stood. His lip curled in disgust. Just as he contemplated the culinary horror that passed for Vidayan hospitality, a chirp from his wrist com snapped him out of his reverie. The device projected a flickering hologram of Jack Simmons, his handler, back on Earth. The veteran diplomat's face was etched with worry. Mike, we've got a problem, Jack said, his voice crackling through the comms speaker. Long-range sensors have picked up a Vidian battle fleet massing near the border of human space. It looks like they're preparing for an invasion. Michael felt his blood turn to ice in his veins. An invasion? But why? We've done nothing to provoke them. Jack's expression turned even grimmer. Intel suggests the Vidians see us as a threat. They're worried our tech level is advancing too quickly. They want to conquer us before we become a challenge to their dominance. Michael's mind raced, scenarios and strategies whirling through his thoughts. I'll try to talk to the High Council, convince them this is a mistake. Jack shook his head vehemently. Negative, Mike. Your new mission is to get off Cyros Prime and back to Earth ASAP. We need your intel on the Vidians to prepare our defences. Suddenly a piercing klaxon filled the air, the wail of alarms blaring through the guest wing. Michael heard the heavy, rhythmic tread of armoured feet approaching his door. They're coming for you, Mike. You need to move now, Jack urged, his voice rising with urgency. Michael gave a curt nod and severed the comm link. He snatched up his go-bag, his fingers finding the hidden quantum beacon inside. With a press of a button, he sent an emergency evacuation signal to the cloaked human starship waiting in orbit. The door to his quarters burst open, the twisted metal screeching in protest. Michael sprinted out into the corridor, only to find himself face to face with a squad of heavily armed Vidian soldiers. Their elongated heads swiveled towards him, compound eyes glittering with malice. Surrender, human! You are now a prisoner of the Imperium! The lead soldier buzzed, his sonic disruptor aimed squarely at Michael's chest. Michael slowly raised his hands, his eyes darting left and right, searching for an opening. Then in a blur of motion he dropped and rolled, just as the Vidians opened fire. Sonic blasts scorched the walls, leaving trails of molten slag in their wake. Michael scrambled for cover, his hand already drawing his pulse pistol from its holster. He squeezed off a series of shots, the high-pitched whine of the weapon filling the corridor. Two Vidians dropped, their kittenous armor smoking from the impact. Michael surged to his feet, sprinting down the corridor towards the landing pad. He could hear the pounding of feet behind him as more soldiers poured into the hallway, their weapons spitting deadly sonic blasts. He burst out onto the landing pad, his lungs burning, his heart hammering against his ribs. And there, like a vision from a dream, a sleek human starfighter shimmered into existence as its cloaking field disengaged. The ramp lowered, beckoning him to safety. Michael ran, his legs pumping, his feet pounding against the alien metal. Pulse blasts sizzled past him, the air crackling with their passage. He hurled himself up the ramp, the heat of the Vidayan's fire scorching his back. The ramp hissed shut behind him, the ship's hull shuddering as it lifted off. Michael collapsed into the co-pilot's seat, his chest heaving as he gulped down lungfuls of air. Next to him in the pilot's chair sat a tough-looking woman with short cropped hair and a wry smile on her lips. Looks like diplomacy's failed. Time for plan B, she quipped, her hands dancing over the ship's controls. As the starfighter streaked away from Ciros Prime, Vidian ships in hot pursuit, Michael stared out at the stars, a grim realization settling over him. This was only the beginning of a much larger conflict, one that would decide the fate of humanity and the Vidian Imperium alike. The starfighter shook violently as plasma blasts slammed into its shields. In the gunnery chair, Michael gripped the controls, his targeting reticle flitting from one Vidian ship to the next. The AI chimed in his ear. Target lock acquired. Michael squeezed the trigger, sending a barrage of pulse cannon fire streaking towards the enemy craft. 
The shots found their mark, punching through the Vidian ship's engines and sending them spiraling into oblivion. Nice shooting, Ava called from the pilot's seat, her hands a blur over the controls as she jinked and wove through the enemy formation. But we're not out of this yet. As if on cue, a massive shape emerged from hyperwarp directly ahead, a Vidian dreadnought, its hull bristling with cannon turrets. Plasma blasts erupted from the behemoth's broadside batteries, searing towards the human starfighter. Hold on! Ava yelled, wrenching the controls hard to port. The ship rolled, barely evading the devastating salvo. Alarms shrieked as the dreadnought's fire grazed their shields. Our shields can't take another hit like that, Michael shouted over the cacophony of warning klaxons. We need to jump now. Ava punched the hyperwarp ignition, but the ship merely shuddered, the stars remaining stubbornly stationary outside the viewports. They've locked us in a gravity well we can't jump, Ava cursed, pounding a fist on the console. Before them, the dreadnought's hangar bay yawned open, a cavernous maw hungry to swallow their crippled starfighter. Tractor beams stabbed out, ensnaring the human ship and inexorably dragging it inside. Michael and Ava locked eyes, a grim understanding passing between them. They were out of options. The ship shuddered as it set down hard on the hangar deck, the impact rattling Michael's teeth. He peered out the viewport at a sea of Vidian soldiers surrounding the ship, weapons trained on the battered starfighter. A harsh voice crackled over the comm. Humans disembark your craft and surrender immediately, or be destroyed. With no other choice, Michael and Ava stood, raising their hands in surrender. The ship's ramp descended with a hiss, and they emerged to find themselves instantly swarmed by the Vidian troops. Up close, the aliens were even more fearsome to behold, towering over the humans in their powered exoskeletons, compound eyes glinting coldly behind transparent faceplates. Harsh insectoid hands shackled Michael's wrists, the restraints biting painfully into his flesh, Beside him, Ava grunted as she received similarly rough treatment. Prodded by plasma rifles, they were marched into the bowels of the massive ship, the hangar vanishing behind them as they entered a labyrinthine maze of corridors. As they walked, Ava leaned close, her voice a barely audible whisper. Escape pods, deck 5, section 12, on my mark. Michael dipped his chin a fraction, acknowledging her with the barest nod. He could feel the tension coiling in his muscles, his entire body alert and ready to spring into action at Ava's signal. Suddenly the deck heaved beneath their feet, sending Vidians and humans alike stumbling. A thunderous boom echoed through the ship, followed by the rising wail of alarms. The dreadnought shuddered, the lights flickering ominously. The Vidian guards buzzed in agitation, their formation loosening. Now, Ava yelled, in a blur of motion, she slammed her forehead into the guard, restraining her. The alien's faceplate shattered under the impact. Ava snatched the plasma rifle from the reeling Vidian's grasp, pivoting and opening fire on the surrounding guards. Michael burst into motion, diving for a fallen guard's weapon. His fingers closed around the rifle's grip and he rolled, coming up firing. Plasma bolts streaked down the corridor as he and Ava sprinted for the escape pods, alarms shrieking in their wake. Booted feet thundered behind them. Michael risked a glance over his shoulder to see Vidian reinforcements pouring into the passageway, their weapons spitting deadly plasma fire. He snapped off a burst from his appropriated rifle, dropping the lead pursuer. Ahead, Ava skidded to a halt before a nondescript hatch, slamming a fist into the control panel. The hatch groaned open, revealing a cramped escape pod. Freedom was just steps away. Plasma fire sizzled past Michael's head as he ran, his heart jackhammering against his ribs. Just as he reached the threshold of the pod, white-hot agony exploded in his shoulder. He cried out, staggering, the acrid stench of his own burnt flesh filling his nostrils. Haver seized him, dragging him into the pod. Somehow through the pain, Michael managed to keep his grip on his weapon, sending a hail of covering fire into the corridor. Ava slapped the launch controls, and the hatch slammed shut. The pod blasted free of the dreadnought, the sudden acceleration crushing Michael back into his seat, 
darkness swimming at the edges of his vision. Clinging to consciousness, he peered out the tiny rear viewport. What he saw made his jaw drop open in disbelief. Human warships, dozens of them, dropped out of hyperwarp in a blaze of Cherenkov radiation. Mass accelerator cannons and plasma beams stabbed out, converging on the lone Vidayan dreadnought. The behemoth's shields flared under the onslaught, then failed entirely. Explosions stippled the mighty ship's hull as the barrage tore through armor and into vital systems. As the pod streaked away from the dying dreadnought, the last sight Michael beheld was the once mighty ship breaking apart, consumed in a cataclysmic explosion. Darkness took him then, his body slumping in his restraints, a grim smile on his blood-flecked lips. Michael's eyes fluttered open, squinting against the harsh glare of the medical bay's lights. He tried to sit up, then hissed in pain as his bandaged shoulder throbbed in protest. Ava leaned over from her seat beside his bed, her face etched with concern. Easy there, hotshot. That plasma bolt nearly took your arm off. Michael eased back onto the pillow, his head swimming. What, what happened? The last thing I remember is the escape pod. Ava filled him in, her voice taut. The surprise attack worked. We caught the Vidians with their pants down, crippled their invasion fleet. But it's only a matter of time before they regroup and come back at us twice as hard. The sick bay's view screen crackled to life, revealing the craggy, battle-worn face of General Graves. Ambassador Miller, glad you're still with us, he gruffed. That intel you brought back will be crucial in the coming fight. Michael struggled upright, gritting his teeth against the pain. General, we can't just sit back and wait for the Vidians to hit us again. We need to take the fight to them. Graves' eyebrows rose. What exactly are you suggesting, Ambassador? Michael outlined his plan. It was bold, audacious, maybe even suicidal. A small team led by him and Ava would infiltrate the Vidian homeworld and capture the Sire Father Council itself. With the Vidian leadership as hostages, they could force the aliens to the negotiating table. Graves shook his head. Miller, you're still recovering from your injuries, and even at full strength this plan of yours is a long shot at best. Michael's jaw clenched. Maybe so, but it's the only shot we've got. If we wait for the Vidians to attack again, we may not survive. We have to act now. Graves was silent for a long moment, his eyes hard and calculating. Finally, he gave a curt nod. All right, Miller, you've got the green light. Pick your team and get ready to deploy. But make no mistake, if this goes sideways, there won't be any rescue. You'll be on your own out there. Days later... Michael found himself once again breathing the acrid alien air of Cyros Prime. He and Ava led a hand-picked team of human operatives, each one a hardened veteran of dozens of covert missions. They moved like ghosts through the twisting corridors of the Capitol Dome, neutralizing Vidayan security patrols with ruthless efficiency. But as they neared the council chambers, all hell broke loose. Alarms shrieked as the team was spotted, and suddenly the corridors swarmed with heavily armed Vidian soldiers. Plasma fire filled the air, the sizzle of the deadly bolts mixing with the screams of the wounded and dying. Michael and his team fought like demons, cutting down the Vidian troops in brutal close-quarters combat. They pushed forward relentlessly, leaving a trail of mangled alien corpses in their wake. At last, they burst into the council chambers, pulse rifles spitting death. It was over in moments, the Sire Fathers, once so haughty and disdainful, cowered before the gore-splattered humans. Michael stood over Zorath, his rifle aimed squarely at the alien's head. Surrender, Michael demanded, his voice cold as the void. Call off your fleet now. But Zorath only glared back defiantly. You think you've won, human. You understand nothing. We Vidians once trusted another species, the Krill, and they betrayed us, slaughtered us by the millions. We swore then that we would never again allow another race to threaten us. The Sire Father's words dripped with venom. You humans, with your rapidly advancing technology, you are the Krill Reborn, a threat that must be eliminated before you can destroy us. Michael reeled back, stunned by the revelation, but before he could respond, his comlink crackled urgently. Ambassador Miller, this is Earth Command. 
A massive Vidian fleet just dropped out of hyperwarp above Earth. They're bombarding the planet. Our defenses can't hold them. Michael's blood ran cold. Even as he stood victorious on Cyros Prime, his homeworld burned. In that instant, he made a fateful decision. He lowered his rifle and locked eyes with Zoreth. There's another way, a way to end this conflict before it consumes both our species. The sire father sneered. And what way is that, human? Peace, Michael said simply. Cooperation. Humanity has developed zero-point energy technology, a limitless clean power source that could revolutionize your society. End this war, and it's yours. Zoreth's eyes widened, avarice warring with distrust on his alien features. You would share such a thing with us after all this? Michael nodded solemnly. I would, because the alternative is the destruction of both our peoples. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. We stand on the brink, Zoreth, but we can step back from it together. A tense silence stretched out, broken only by the distant thunder of orbital bombardment above Earth. Then slowly, Zoreth raised a slender finger to his comlink. This is Sirefather Zoreth to all Vidian forces. Stand down. Cease fire immediately. I am opening negotiations with the humans. Michael felt a weight lift from his shoulders, even as Ava shot him a worried look. Had he just saved two species from annihilation, or doomed them to an even more terrible fate? As he watched the first joint human Vidian research teams pour over the zero-point energy schematics, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning. The scars left by the brief but bloody conflict would linger for generations. Only time would tell if this moment would be remembered as a turning point towards peace, or the first step on the road to an even more devastating war. Michael stared out the viewport at the looming Vidian ships, now motionless above Earth, and shuddered. The path forward was anything but certain. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video, then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.